Hi, Lois. Hello. Hi, it's so nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. Thanks for having us over. Lois Sunrich is 72, retired, and a longtime resident of Encinitas. This is my studio apartment, and I'm a story collector and have a little nonprofit, and this is my office and my home. Sunrich's walls are lined with books, mostly memoirs, and 250 diaries filled with her own writing. These are all of your journals? Or? These and those up there and then in the closet over there. Sunrich is lucky. Years ago, a patron helped her pay off this 400-square-foot condo. But with little saved for retirement, her living situation still wasn't stable. She looked into selling and moving into a subsidized rental apartment. But in a city where 80 percent of the land is zoned for single-family homes, affordable housing is nearly impossible to find, much less build. One of the difficult parts um, about being in the conversation about housing in Encinitas is that um, we have created laws that have made it more difficult for us to build housing. That conversation continues Friday, when local leaders will gather to decide how much housing each city in the county will have to plan for over the next decade. And Sunitas Mayor Catherine Blakespear was one of the elected officials who came up with the methodology to guide that decision. She says in the past, cities, including her own, could get away with blocking any growth from happening. And the state perceives that that is what has created the housing crisis. So we have a lack of supply of homes because so many cities have said, we're not interested in more homes here. We got ours. We're going to close the door after us. Under the new methodology, a city's housing allocation is determined by two factors, how much public transit it has and how many jobs there are. The goal is to allow more people to take transit to work, or if they have to drive, at least it's a shorter commute. Although the methodology and concept makes sense, it doesn't take into account the nuances of each individual city. Richard Bailey is mayor of Coronado. If leaders approve the new housing methodology, his city would have to plan for a thousand new homes. That's not much compared to other cities, but it's 20 times what Coronado was asked to plan for the last time around. Bailey says the methodology should take into account some of his city's jobs are actually overseas in the military. And he says the city of Coronado has authority over only a fraction of its own land. And then the question comes down to, well, who, who's responsible for stepping up? And throughout the South Bay region, many cities uh, have already stepped up, including Coronado. And so I think it's important that we take a, a look at what cities have already done historically and make sure that all the cities throughout the region are stepping up to do their fair share. I mean, I'm not sure that that's really a legitimate position. Encinitas Mayor Catherine Blakespear says the methodology for allocating housing throughout the county has to be fair and explainable to the public. I think that every city has their particular reason, and the county, that they think their number should be different and lower. I have been extremely fortunate. Back at her studio in Encinitas, Lois Sunrich says she's now getting by thanks to the charity of friends and colleagues. But she knows others aren't so lucky. She says the way things are going, only the rich will be able to live in the communities where they work. We're going to be segregated. We're not going to all come together and live together. And and I, I'm I'm really not wanting to have that kind of city as my hometown. Elected officials are scheduled to vote Friday on a draft methodology that will guide its housing plan. Whatever they settle on, it will also need approval from the state. Andrew Bowen, KPBS.